let's take a look at Newton's third law of motion. So the way that the third law is often stated is, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. And that's lovely. Um, you probably heard that before. But it misses a lot of important information. It doesn't explain what an action and a reaction are. So that takes some explanation. I mean, are they forces? Um, and what causes one force to be an action and another, ac another force to be a reaction? Uh, it's a little unclear. So perhaps a clearer way of stating Newton's third law is if object A causes a force on object B, then object B must cause a force on object A that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And if we wanted to sort of pare that down into a more mathematical way, we could write it this way. FAB is equal to the negative of FBA, where FAB is the force of A acting on B, the force of BA is the force of B acting on A, and this says that they are the same size, they're equal to each other, and the negative sign tells us that they're in opposite directions. Now, when you read that, sometimes people say, well wait, how can that be true, or how could anything move if there's always an equal and opposite force for every force. The trick is that Newton's third law relates forces that are acting on different objects, not on the same object. And this is different than the first and second law. The first and second law both looked at isolated objects. We went out of our way to say that when we apply Newton's second law, we're looking at only the forces on a single object. But Newton's third law is different. Newton's third law relates forces acting on two different objects. And let's look at an example of this. Let's say that we have a polar bear and a penguin sitting on frictionless ice. And they're in contact. And the polar bear pushes the penguin to the right. And the polar bear pushes on the penguin with 50 newtons of force. Also, let's give the masses of the polar bear and the penguin. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Let's say, what force is applied to the polar bear? Well, the polar bear pushes on the penguin with 50 newtons of force. So the penguin experiences 50 newtons of force. And the way that this is drawn, the penguin feels 50 newtons of force to the right. So the question, what force is applied to the polar bear? Well, Newton's third law says that if the polar bear applies 50 newtons to the right on the penguin, then the penguin must apply the same amount of force in the opposite direction on the polar bear. So the polar bear will experience the same amount of force, 50 newtons, in the opposite direction to the left. All right, so same amount of force. But now let's solve for the acceleration of both the penguin and the polar bear. Okay, let's do the acceleration of the penguin. Well, we know the force acting on the penguin. Uh, that's 50 newtons to the right. And we know the mass, 10 kilograms. So we can use Newton's second law to solve for the acceleration. The acceleration would be five meters per second squared. Five meters per second squared to the right. Okay, and now let's look at the polar bear the acceleration of the polar bear. Well, we know the force acting on the polar bear. That's 50 newtons to the left. And we know the mass of the polar bear, 250 kilograms. So the acceleration of the polar bear would be 0 0.200 meters per second squared to the left. So we have the same force, or the same amount of force, applied to the penguin and to the polar bear. But they have different masses, and so they respond to that force in different ways. The penguin has less mass, so it'll have a greater acceleration. Polar bear has more mass, so it'll have a smaller acceleration. Let's look at another example. Let's say that there's a truck going along, and there's a fly. And the truck impacts the fly. The fly hits the windshield of the truck. So the truck will definitely apply a force on the fly. And Newton's third law says that the force that the fly applies on the truck has to be the same in magnitude 
and opposite in direction. Now that might sound odd because the fly applying a force to the truck, the same amount of force to the truck that the truck applies to the fly, maybe that seems counterintuitive, right? You know that the fly is going to feel a force, it's going to get squished. But the truck, the truck is fine. The truck acts like it didn't feel a force at all, right? But it did. It was the same amount of force in the opposite direction. The difference is that the masses of the fly and the truck are very, very different. The tiny little fly, let's say it experiences five newtons. Well, five newtons on a fly is quite a lot. That's enough to squish it. But five newtons on the truck is not very much. Five newtons on a truck is not going to affect the truck very much. There is a tiny little acceleration of the truck. The truck does change its motion a little bit because it hits the fly, but it's negligible. It's not noticeable. So Newton's third law does apply. It's just that the amount of force on the fly, which is very small, has a much greater and noticeable impact than that same amount of force on the truck.